Hi and welcome to Peace Meg TV. In the second instalment of the Sequence in Drums with Reaper series, we're going to take a look at expanding upon the skills we covered in the first video. We're going to take a look at making a more complicated drum beat. We're going to take a look at adding some more dynamics in by adding in human elements. And we're going to cover a few other topics. So let's crack on and see how we can do those things. So we're back in the MIDI editor in Reaper. As you can see, I've got the drum beat that I was working on the previous video. It's a pretty straightforward 4-4 beat, nothing spectacular. Well, what I want to do first of all is change the, the basic drum kit that we're currently using, and we're going to swap that out for a kit that's a little bit more akin to the kind of music that, that I like to record. So I'm just going to click and choose Metal Machine, and I'm going to choose the Big Room kit. And that's going to take a couple of seconds to load in. And as we can see, we've got a much bigger kit. A lot more versatility, so we can do a lot more with this. So let's just take that out of the way. So let's listen to our drum beat now with a different kit. Just a bit more sort of punch to it. So let's just zoom in a little bit. All I'm doing is holding the control or the command key down on the keyboard and using the, the mouse wheel to zoom in. And what this does is it just effectively makes the grid slightly larger, which means working with these particular drum beats and the symbols that we're using there, just a little bit easier, a little bit more clarity to it. One thing you'll notice that if you've got any drum hits that are above your view or below your view, you'll see you'll get these little green squares that'll denote the fact there's actually something above or below, depending upon where those beats are. Just so you're thinking if you've got something that's, that's way up on a different sample level and you're zoomed in like we are here and you're thinking, well, where the hell are my drums gone? Well, that's just an indicator to let you know it's there. So let's just go back and take a look at what we have. Now, there's one simple rule to remember when you're creating realistic drums in any drum sequencing software, and that's the fact that every drummer, well, almost every drummer, has four limbs they can utilize at any one time. So when you're creating your drum beats, you've got to think of the fact that you can't do more than four things realistically at the same time. So if you're doing things like you're playing double bass, and you want to put some crash symbols in and things like that, then you need to take off the ride symbol when you're doing that or the hi-hat symbol when you're doing that to make it sound realistic. So for example, if we want to start this off with a, uh, a bass drum beat and a crash symbol, I'm going to take off the hi-hat just to give me a more realistic sound. So I can hit the crash in there, adjust the velocity of that. Same with the kick drum, I want the first note to be pretty punchy. And we'll find out that when I hit the first note, we're going to come in with a, a cymbal crash as well as a, as a louder bass drum. Okay, pretty simple. Nothing really complicated about that. Now, what I tend to do when I'm working with drum beats is I'll start off with something relatively simple. So I'm just going to take off these extra drum beats and we're going to put it back to a cymbal 4 4 kind of beat. Now to remove any of these, these hits, all you need to do is take your mouse over the relevant hit you want to get rid of, double click with the left mouse button and that will remove it. Alternatively, you can hold the right mouse button down, drag it over to select multiple ones and press the delete on your keyboard and that'll do the same thing. So we've gone back to our simple drum beat. And I'm gonna switch it back to a 4-4 grid so I can see what I'm doing. And you can see we just got a... Pretty boring. So as we said, we can add extra beats in this. So let's just say, well, okay, I've recorded my track. Now I just put this down as a, as a, a basic timeline kind of thing, just so I can use it instead of using a, a click track, which for some reason I can't work with. Let's go and put a bit more excitement into that. Let's switch it up to eight notes. And let's just put an extra couple of drum beats in. So we now have something still pretty boring, but it keeps it a, a, a standard beat. So let's just make that a little bit more exciting just by adjusting the position of some of these notes. So instead of just, oh, these, these hits, so instead of just keeping something that just goes into a simple boring the, the beat, let's just move the position of these so we can have a little bit more interest in it. So. So you can see just by adjusting a couple of simple B 
beat positions we can make a bit more interesting. So the simple rule is, if you want to add additional beats in there, you need to adjust the grid to position them. So let's just add a couple of extra ones in there. And let's see what we get. Already starts to sound a bit more interesting. Let's just move that back up. That sounded a little bit weird. So what you can see is it's very easy to quickly adjust these to get a much more interesting drum beat. Even though you're using a simple beat to get your timing down and do your initial recording, you can come back in and make a far more interesting drum beat just by adjusting the actual kick drum positions. Um, so let's just... I think you kind of agree that's already just a little bit more interesting. Just zoom out a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So let's just say we want to change the position of these hi-hat hits. We don't want that particular hi-hat. Well, I can group select them. They'll retain all of the velocity settings or anything else I've done, and I can just simply drag those up to any of the other samples. So say, for example, I want to go on the crash instead of the hi-hats. I can do that. I can adjust the velocity of those now to give it a bit more intensity. And we can drop in a couple of extra cymbal hits where we sort of think, well, they, they'll make a little bit of an accent on the, the kind of note that we want. So we'll just take uh, this one, for example, and we'll take that off from being that sort of crash that we ride in there. So let's listen. Not too bad at all. So what we've done there is we've created a more complicated drum beat. But it's still perfectly aligned to the grid. So everything, even though we've adjusted the velocity, we're still dealing with something that is probably, unless they are an incredible drummer, a little bit too regimented, a little bit too on beat. So what we can do is we can adjust that information. We can do the opposite of quantizing, which will pull it back to the beat, and we can adjust it to make it more human. So not every beat will be exactly on the beat where it should be. It'll be slightly forward, slightly back. You know, you, you can get a little bit more, a bit of a swing to it, a little bit of a, a dynamic element to it. So let's see how we can do that. So I've got a couple of custom icons on my toolbar. You may well find that yours is laid out different to mine, and all you need to do is you can use the the menus to do exactly the same thing. I'll do the same as I did in the previous video, which is just right click on the bottom tab, and you can see that I've got things like options where I can do things like I can go to file, I can do edit, and I can I can quantize my notes, I can humanize it, I can transpose it, I can use the keyboard shortcuts to do the same thing. And if I wanted to do the same as what I've got at the top here with the little uh, little horns. I can just go on to edit and I can just say humanize or I can just use my shortcut or my icon I should say. So what this does is this brings up a simple dialog box that gives us three pieces of information. We can adjust timing, we're going to adjust velocity and we're going to adjust the timing bias. We can specify we want to do all the notes or we can highlight and, and just affect the selected notes. So if we want to create a sort of more human side of things. I don't want to adjust the velocity. I'm kind of happy with the velocity, so I'll take that back off. But what I will do is adjust my timing by, let's just say, about 5%. So what we're saying is that we want a difference of about 5% in the timing based upon uh, where it currently positions. So it's going to adjust it either before the beat or after the beat ever so slightly. And we're going to say we want all the notes because we want everything in this particular section. And we'll just hit OK. And what you should find, if we zoom in a little bit, is that if we take a look at this beat, for example, it's not exactly on beat. It's slightly after where it would normally be. And if we scroll over, and you can see this one is slightly before the beat. And if we scroll down, you can see these are slightly off beat. So what we're going to find is by using this technique, we can quickly transpose this into a more humanized kind of drum beat. So if we utilize that along with the velocity, we get in slightly uh, sloppy timing, should we say, by a small percentage. We're also getting a more human element by the fact that not every single beat is being hit at the same velocity every single time. So all these little, little tips and tricks will actually create a more human sounding drum beat, a little bit more sort of realistic. 
So if we just take that back, you probably won't notice a massive difference, but it's just to know that when you are playing this or you're recording along with it, you're going to have that slight difference, that slight shift in uh, position and slight difference in velocity. So it's going to be slightly more human again. So. Not really noticeable because it's only a small shift, but like I say, it's going to be more akin to playing with a real drummer. Now, something else the drummers do is they add in ghost notes. A ghost notes are a very simple concept. All it really means is they'll add a note either before or a beat before or after the snare hit, for example, that's a lot quieter and it kind of accents that, that main hit, gives it a little bit more presence. Now, we can do that quite easily in, uh, in our sequencer. Let's just get rid of these extra notes. Now, I've set my grid to 16th notes. Now, obviously, this is going to come down to the drum kit that you're using. It's going to come down to the drum beat that you're creating and also the timing and everything. So you might find you need to play about with this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick an extra snare hit right there. So if we just listen to that at its normal velocity alongside the, the snare hit, it just gives us a double hit. Okay, so it's just a normal double hit. But if we reduce the velocity of that second hit, we find as we drop it down, we get a quieter hit. So now if we just play that, now what we also do is just zoom out a little bit and I'll just make these, instead of using the crash there, we'll just take that back up to the hi hat so it's a little less in your face. So we can hear the uh, the subtleties of the the two hits. So let's try that again. Don't know if you could hear that. Let's take it up just ever slightly. So we just make it a little bit more interesting. So I'll do the same right here. Drop that down ever so slightly. Just a little bit too loud for me still. And we can do the same beforehand and get a sort of a nice percussive element with this. Again, we'll just put these in, take out the, the bass beats. So you're starting to add a little bit more of a rhythmic pattern to it, a little bit more sort of interest in this. Take that back up as well, in the wrong place. And we'll do the same on this snare head. So you can see by just adding ghost notes in, we change the whole dynamic of the drum beat again. So and you know, we can change that even more so by adjusting the velocity of any of these hits to make them quieter. So you can say the first hit is slightly loud, louder, the middle hit is a good crack, then the, the third one is quieter again. We do the same with this one. I'm not being too precise here because again we're, we're trying to keep that human element you know no drummer is going to hit the, the drum at the same velocity every single time no matter the pattern is so so we add a couple of extra bass beats in here just to give it a little bit more life again So hopefully what you can see is we can create more dynamics that sound in drum beats by adding things like ghost notes in, adjusting the velocity, adjusting the sort of the human element of it by transposing it and just getting a little bit creative. So adding all these different elements in, in the relevant locations can create a far more interesting drum beat than just simply going at it with same velocity, perfectly on time every single time and just a bass drum, a snare, a bass drum, a snare, a couple of toms and things like that. So that's it for this particular video. In the next video, we'll go into a little bit more depth about creating more harder hitting drum beats. Take a look at some double bass and things like that. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button below. It really does help. Hit the subscribe, share with anybody you think will find it useful, and uh, subscribe yourself, like I said, to be kept up to date with all of the new videos that are coming to the Peacemaker TV channel. Until next time, take care.